You know those times when you're looking at product reviews online and in one particular product you see this massive amount of five-star raving reviews, some of them in all caps? That's the same feeling we get from the stereotype of all car salesmen. That something is um, off. And yes, you should be passionate about what you're selling, because if you're not passionate about your product, in no way you will be able to persuade anyone or even trying it. But there is a break-even point, that point when the passion a person projects stops feeling natural and starts looking suspicious, as in, is this product really this good, or could this person have a hidden interest that we are not seeing? And that's what happened to me with this video of Bill Gates. He's talking about the feasibility of mRNA technology for as many diseases as possible, making the cure faster, cheaper, and more efficient. Essentially, the opposite of whatever he did with Windows after Windows 95. We wish that Gates was the kind of billionaires that focus on, I don't know, hydrogen power super yachts. I mean, testing cutting-edge technology, not on regular people, but on billionaires themselves. Be experimental with toys that only the super rich can afford. Sounds fair, right? Billionaires being the guinea pigs of the technology they want to suggest that we use. Now, this is not my first rodeo analyzing one of the favorite subjects among Guy Fox enthusiasts. But I think I have never seen him this excited about something. So he's talking about the possibility of having mRNA technology for every non-disease. So let's start watching his body language in the next clip and try to spot what's going on with his hands. Making the mRNA is really easy and really cheap. And that's the magic of this thing. But there's no doubt in the next five years, we can, you know, we just need to mess around. There's a lot of... Well, right out of the gate, he uses a couple words that are concerning. We just need to mess around, like with any other new technology, right? But, dear Mr. Gates, I don't want to rain on your parade, but the next five years, we will be busy enough messing around with chef robots who will be using butcher knives in our own kitchen, and we will have to trust that they remain turn off while we sleep at night. And I don't need to remind you how that technology is being tested, right? Let's talk about his body language and what makes him look so excited about this project. First, you notice that he shows this huge amplitude of gestures in the sense that he's using both hands to emphasize his words. And the amplitude refers to how wide are those hand movements, in this case, almost going outside the camera. That's one signal of excitement when we use ample gestures to draw attention to what we are saying. And this is very common with adverbs as he says, really easy and really cheap. And the second detail worth mentioning is the height of his gestures. And this is part of Gates' expression when he's excited about something. He raises his hands at head level. But usually he raises just his left hand. And it's important to remember that he is left-handed. So that's his more expressive hand. But in this case, it's both hands that he's putting up in the air. So it's almost like he's trying to send this signal that this is the best thing ever. Also, there are two other signals that confirm that he's emotionally shaken. One is that he fixes his glasses in a rather nervous way, and the other is that he fixes himself in the chair. The first one is a bit of a pacifying gesture that he's doing to soothe or calm himself down. And we have usually seen this kind of gestures when people are distressed, but as you can see, it can appear when people are overexcited. And it's that energy that he feels about the topic that makes him almost jump out of his chair. So in just 10 seconds, we have a good idea of how emotionally invested is Gates on this project. It's important that you take notice of this because uh, his body language will, will radically change later in this video. So keep that in mind so you can compare both nonverbal displays. And uh, there was something that he said in this clip that he's going to repeat in the next clip. And it's important for reasons you're about to find out. Watch. 
So as over the five years, we fix that part of it, mature it, which is very typical, uh, we'll be able to build factories worldwide that can make $2 vaccines Okay, so he repeats the five years thing, but the words over the five years, we fix that part of it, mature it, which is very typical. So what he just said is that it's typical or normal or common that technology like this will take five years to be fixed and mature, right? And just in case, let's watch that clip again. So as over the five years, we fix that part of it, mature it, which is very typical, uh, we'll be able to build factories worldwide that can make $2 vaccines. So yes, he said that. It typically takes five years to fix and mature technology as groundbreaking as this. Make of that what you will. But that must be the reason why he had one filler word right after making that statement which is very typical, uh, we'll be able to And that's why rhythm is so important in body language analysis. Even with clips as short as this one, being able to spot when something changes, whether it's a hand gestures or blinking or posture or voice tone. And in this clip, you also notice that he touched his nose in sort of a scratching pattern. Now, touching one's nose uh, doesn't always mean that you're concealing something or it's always a Pinocchio gesture. It could mean that the person has allergies. That could be it. But sometimes you need to consider the possibility that, yes, the excitement of the person could make those allergy symptoms worse in a matter of seconds and make your nose way itchier. It's also important to pinpoint when a gesture happens uh, related to what the person is saying. And he did the nose rubbing right after repeating the five-year thing. So maybe he realized he was putting too much stress on a time frame that, well, would make other things hard to explain. So he had this sudden swelling of the tiny vessels of the nose making him react like that. So, yes, it might be just allergies, but at the same time, it can be a mixed signal that confirms that something else happened. Like he thinks uh, he's getting into muddy waters talking this way. There's another signal in this clip that is a bit confusing when he says that we'll be able to build factories worldwide to make $2 shots, he's denying with his head. Uh, you know that denying with it, your head can be also a signal that you're emphasizing something, but I don't see anything in this statement like adverbs uh, that could be emphasized with body language. Could it be that he doesn't really believe that said factories can be built? or that the price he says cannot be achieved? Those are all possibilities. Any body language analysis is just a stacking of signals and clues until you can reach a solid conclusion. And the next clip is a continuation of the factory feasibility. With what you have learned so far, let's see what can you spot with his body language. Uh, we'll be able to build factories worldwide that can make $2 vaccines with even less lead time than we've had to have here during this pandemic. Yeah, we just saw a mixed bag of all the body language clues that we have seen up to this point, especially the ample gestures. But for some reason, you see that the intensity of the beginning has begun to dwindle. The most relevant thing is how it makes a pause before affirming that this technology will require even less lead time than their first application. Of course, that uh, reduced lead time uh, it will only happen after the typical five years of messing around, right? But that diminished intensity could be an emotional adjustment in the sense that he's making these bold claims and all of a sudden he realizes that he should take it down a notch because, yes, he might be aware that he's sounding like an used car salesman. And... That's the reason why his pauses become more pronounced in the following clip. And we'll use those, as you suggest, for every disease that we don't have vaccines, we will try mRNA. In fact, for HIV, we have multiple ways. I know it's strange to call Bill Gates an expert on mRNA technology, but at least we know how he's been in interested in pushing it, whatever it takes. So it's safe to say that he's had to talk about this and the possibilities dozens, if not hundreds of times in the past couple of years. 
So uh, this is the kind of things that I find suspicious in the sense that someone who has talked in interviews and seminars and podcasts and everywhere else about a certain topic, it's unusual that they will have such breaks speaking about the topic. Because at some point, your brain is just repeating the same patterns, connecting the same ideas one after another. So it's less and less likely that you will have to think on the fly. In fact, what can happen is the opposite. You are so used to talk about the topic that it's easy for you to get excited about it. And that's precisely what we saw in the first couple clips. And that excitement can perfectly make you go a bit overboard with your claims That's what might have made him nervous. But now it's in the final clip that you can see how, all of a sudden, Gates' body language changes. And it's a dramatic change. The idea is not only to spot that change, but what is he saying at the same time that change happens? Watch. And so to fill in the missing vaccines, uh, we will... We'll make a lot of our bets of, of the Gates Foundation and others who care about global health uh, will be a, a mRNA focused. Now he's talking about the bets he's going to take through the Gates Foundation. But did you see how his body language all of a sudden changed from being excited to closing in on himself? That was odd. He not only made himself look smaller, but he also crossed his arms. Maybe he's not confident enough about said... Um, bets. Also some stuttering, looking away, and not that confident anymore. But one thing is for sure, all of Gates' bets will be put on mRNA technology. So it's just a matter of time until we get the results of that messing around. But I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. Remember to download my 100 body language tips in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the body language guy. And remember, much love and bliss.